Okay, so this talk will be about what's new in the land of redismonitoring.org, the two, 2022 edition. Uh, my name is Michal Konečný. I'm a senior software engineer in CP team. Uh, maybe some of you are asking why I have the wizard hat and why this is all doing in a magical way. Uh, I started to work on the releasemonitoring.org a few years ago, and I actually uh, did a blog post, and the blog posts are written as a uh, magical one. So if you want to read them, they are on community Fedora community blog post. So uh, feel free to read them. I didn't uh, do any in a long time, which I should probably uh, fix. And let's get to the, to the presentation then. Okay, so first, so you can see this is a vision of the magical world of releasemetric.org. I, uh, uh, I'm still, uh, I'm on the, uh, mountain near so i can just bring you the, this whole picture i'm usually on the in the castle and the highest tower in the castle uh, uh, on the image so and the new hotness that is a part of resmonitoring.org is floating some to, somewhere above okay so some basic sorcery so you know what this is about Okay, so what is releasemonitoring.org? It contains from two applications, at least in Fedora. Uh, the Anitya is web interface. It's actually what you will see when you visit the releasemonitoring.org page. Uh, it allows users to add project to watch for new releases. Uh, it automatically checks for new releases. It sends Fedora messages when new version is retrieved. It uh, uh, allows you to actually work with uh, the database of, of the Anitya. And the second uh, one is the new hotness, which is the Fedora messaging consumer. And this one is what you will get as a packager notifications uh, about a new version. It consumes the messages from Anitya and creates the bugzilla for you. And even starts a scratch build if uh, this is configured. And first, look at the Anitya. The Anitya has uh, some magic numbers, some statistics. Everybody loves statistics. So uh, let me ask you a question first. What? Uh, how many uh, How many projects do you think the Anitya is watching right now? Uh, uh, let's be honest and not uh, check the page itself. But uh, yeah, just throw your tip in the chat. I will look at it uh, in a minute. Just first look uh, look at the contributions from the last nest. So uh, what you can see in uh, the parentheses is uh, the what uh, was. Uh, the contribution in the last year or statistics from the last year and what uh, happened from the last nest till uh, this nest. They are probably some things missing because there was some new commits uh, incoming in the last few days, which I didn't uh, have here, but otherwise it is here. So we had only two releases for, uh, for Anitya instead of eight, but, uh, oh yeah, somebody's confused uh, confused about the uh, year. What is, in the, uh, what is in the parenthesis is from the NEST 2020 to NEST 2021, and contribution from NEST 2021 till NEST 2022 are those that are uh, before it. So, uh, first, uh, we had only two releases. This is much less than the eight in the previous year. 
uh, it was because there is some issue with the authentication. I waited long time till this will be uh, solved on the upstream, but it didn't. So I created a workaround, and it's now running in the Fedora infra uh, in the Fedora ecosystem in with the workaround. So if you try to run it on your own machine, you will probably see issues with the authentication. Uh, okay. So uh, we had many more commits from more contributors. Uh, the number of commits could be uh, could be somewhat um, messed up because uh, we uh, I uh, enabled the dependabot, which is uh, automatically updating uh, packages and creating pull requests for them. So this could be most of the commits that you can see. But I still think that uh, we have plenty more contributors than we had in previous year. Um, so issues created, there were much less issues because there was, wasn't that much releases. So I think this is the reason. Uh, I didn't have that much time to work on it. Uh, so there were only 30, uh, only half of the issues closed in the previous year. And but the current version right now is 1.41, which has uh, which had really bad uh, issue in 1.40, which uh, caused the database to actually uh, keep uh, the Anita to keep connections open to the database. So we had plenty of uh, connections just for the Anita itself. So and now I will uh, look at what the people thinks about the number of packages. So the, as I see the numbers, they are really low. You will see it now. As you can see, the Anita is currently watching 200 to 100,000, over 200,000 packages, which is uh, uh, 30,000 more than last year. And for Fedora mapped packages, we have uh, above uh, almost 21,000 and we had 20,000 last year. So this is growing as well. OK, so. Ah, what about new features? OK, so new features in uh, in Anitya. Uh, there are some links added to Alma Linux package. So if there is any mapping to Alma Linux package, it will automatically add you a link to it. And you can click it and see where the package is hosted. We have a new backend to retrieve git, uh, git tags um, for SourceForge. We have new versioning scheme. So if you have package uh, from PyPy and it's using the PEP, uh, 440 versioning scheme, you can just select it. Uh, we had plenty of bug fixes and development changes in the release, especially the 1.4.0. And uh, um, the Fedora messaging schema was migrated to separate uh, repository. This will help us with managing the versions of the message schema better than when it is part of the Anitya repository. Okay, and what about the future? So one of the things, these are the issues I think are interesting and I would like to see them in uh, Anitya in the future. Uh, first is the replacement rules for version strings. It would be really nice to actually have uh, some uh, some rules you can specify that will just take the version that you receive from the upstream and just uh, put it in some format that is more readable. Because sometimes the tags on uh, some of the projects doesn't really look like a version. But yeah, people are tagging plenty of things. So it's always 
some issues. So having some rules that you can actually set would be nice. Uh, right now it's done by just, uh, if you want to actually do some uh, rules, it, there is a custom backend that will allow you to actually use uh, regex that will parse the web page, which is not really great. And it's not that uh, quick, like using the GitHub API, but yeah, it's working. And for some projects, it's only way to actually get the correct version because the version that is stacked is, is something that isn't really a version. So yeah, it helps uh, hopefully. Uh, next thing is support for different version streams. This is just uh, for uh, projects that have uh, that have uh, multiple version streams like uh, one point zero something, one point uh, one point something, two point something, three point something. So this will allow you to actually set up uh, uh, set up uh, things that you will set up for the project like version scheme for different uh, version stream. It will allow you to actually have, uh, actually uh, address some changes in the projects like uh, switching from semantic versioning to calendar versioning and uh, things like this. So you will just uh, have, uh, have uh, option to actually say from these versions on, it will be uh, calendar versioning and it will work, uh, it will be sorted as a calendar versioning. And even you will see that the, the, there is a new version in one point something in the, and uh, even when the two point is out, which will be useful. And right now, uh, and the next things we have is the links for uh, distro mappings. This is something that somebody from community actually came up with and wanted us to add it. First, it was for Fedora, then uh, I think was the, um, I'm not sure, I think uh, Alma Linux was the second one and there is three, the third one as well. And uh, we want to make this configurable. So there will be always some distro and what link it should uh, point to with the name of the package as uh, some variable that will be added. Uh, we will have new authentication back backend. This is needed because the current one is not working without the workaround. Uh, hopefully the new one will have support for Google and GitHub. We I already have some work done in this case, but uh, it's missing uh, it's missing the Fedora sign in. But the Google and GitHub are working, as uh, I saw. But uh, yeah, it's still not merged. It's still work in uh, progress. And I would uh, the next thing I would like is to have RSS feeds for projects, so you don't need to have your own consumer for Fedora messages to actually consume Anita uh, Anita updates. Just uh, you will just uh, uh, see the RSS feed uh, that will that will just put uh, uh, tell you that there is a new version in uh, Anita. Uh, and the next, uh, the last thing I have here is to have uh, automatic filling for of project details when creating a new project. So if you, pro for example, uh, have uh, some Python project. You will put a name, you will put that is on a PyPy and it will just take all the other things or some same defaults, just fill in and you will change what you need. Okay, so this is all for the for the Anitya and no to the new hotness, the floating island in the realm of magic. And the new hotness, some magic numbers, same as on the Anitya. We had more releases on the new hotness. I actually spent more time with the new hotness than with Anitya this uh, last year. Uh, we have plenty more commits, but uh, as I said, this is uh, this is because I uh, enabled the dependabot and uh, most of the commits are from the dependabot. We have less contributors, which is not uh, bad, but uh, it would be better if the number will be growing. 
Uh, there were much more issues created. This is uh, because the bugzilla uh, notification no contains. If there is any error happening, you will get a link to the uh, new hotness uh, issue tracker, so you can uh, you can file the issue directly. Uh, and plenty of issues closed, more than it was created. So I think this is a good pace in this. So the current version is now 1.2 wine, wine one, uh, and in the last year it was uh, 0 0.13.4. So we finally get to the version 1.0, and uh, we continued. Okay, so new features so for new hotness we have uh, some new features that are good for anybody who actually wants to consume the messages uh, it currently can work with multiple versions notified at once you may be noticed that uh, some of the uh, notifications on bugzilla no contains uh, uh, releases that will uh, versions that were uh, obtained from release monitoring and uh, version that is considered latest it will only uh, right now it will only notify you if the latest is changed if it's newer than what it's in fedora but uh, it will uh, it will also make you know that there were other versions the retriever together with it uh, there is a support for stable versions only uh, only works if the Anita actually uh, has is uh, the project on Anita is uh, set up correctly and uh, the versions are correct. Correct, so uh, it can recognize what is the stable and stable version. Uh, currently, um, currently the stay. Um, the stable versions are uh, this isn't configurable in the disk kit yet there is a pull request for the disk kit and pagur but they need to be merged first before this will be available for anybody to actually check it there will be new options one for the stable versions only and one for uh, any version if you want uh, to actually be notified about any new version that will be uh, that will be uh, retrieved by Anita. You can you will have the option, but this uh, could cost uh, the the version that uh, are uh, are retrieved again will be again notified to you because if there will be any uh, admin change in the uh, in Anita like. Uh, deleting some version and retrieving it again it will uh, it will notify you again uh, next thing I said is uh, the Bugzilla notification was actually uh, rewritten and now it contains even the link to monitoring settings so you can click on it and just change that you don't want to monitor uh, don't want the monitoring to actually uh, watch your project or you can change uh, it to uh, any other option you want. Uh, the documentation was updated. Uh, it was updated to a state when um, it should be much easier, e much more easy for anybody who wants to deploy it, to deploy it, and for anybody who wants to use it, where you can actually find information, how you can set the monitoring and other things. Um, and same as Anitya, we moved the Fedora messaging uh, message scheme uh, to separate repository, which will help us to actually maintain the version versions for it much better. Because if it were in the same repository, it would actually cost uh, cost some issues. Because if you do a release on GitHub, you will do the release for the main project, and if there is any change in the messaging scheme you will actually see it only in the tag or another place but not into release only maybe as a mention in the changelog okay so what is the future uh, so future for the new hotness 
we want support for flat packs, we want support for Fedora modules, we want support for Apple. All of those uh, are change that needs to be actually working with another, uh, in most cases, it will be just uh, working in another namespace, but uh, I'm not sure right now. And we will need to have different uh, distribution in this case. It will be still Fedora, but it will be Fedora flat pack. So we know that this is actually a flat pack and we can uh, actually address it. Um, and the last thing that is actually in work for a long time is creating the pull requests in this Git. This is still work in progress. Uh, this is still work in progress and I uh, can't do much about it because it's now waiting for some change in Pagur, which wasn't deployed. It was merged, but it wasn't deployed yet. So I'm still waiting for it. Okay. And this is all I have. So I will look at the questions. I see one in the chat. Uh, yep. I see one in the chat, so I will look at it. And uh, then I will check the Q&A. Uh, what would need to be changed for it to work uh, with Apple? So I uh, noticed that there is a Fedora Apple distribution in Anitya already, so this is uh, solved. But on the new hotness, I need to actually check. Uh, currently, it's checking only if the distro is Fedora. If it will be Fedora Apple, we need to have another branch uh, in the new hotness or part of code that will actually uh, change it to work with another namespace. Uh, I'm not sure if in Apple it's... Uh, if you don't, I'm not sure how, uh, how for Apple are the scratch builds actually run. So if I can just uh, use the same code as for a Fedora, or I need to change something in Apple. I need to look at it uh, more closely. Um, and uh, but uh, yeah, it could be possible to actually check Apple for latest version and compare to Apple. It's is possible. Okay, so let's check the. Uh, questions. There is one that is upvoted. Being able to prune versions without filling a bug would be nice to. Yeah, we don't really want the uh, users to actually delete the version by on their own. But uh, yeah, we could probably we could probably do it because uh, right now it's only admin. Admins can do it. So if you have admin rights and there are possibility to, to uh, fill a flag, I'm sh I know that the flags are not, I'm not really responding to them and they are not really visible to the admins, which is something I need to, uh, I need to address. But uh, I'm, I'm thinking if this will be actually a, uh, issue to actually let people, the users of the Anitya to actually delete the version because all of the versions will be retrieved uh, next time there is a new check. So yeah, I need to think about it. Uh, okay, let me see what other questions are there. Sometimes projects go back with the release numbers. So basically they release a version phone that it was a mistake and take it back. At some point Anitya would ignore future releases after this pushback. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is based on the versioning scheme you set up. If the version is considered newer than the versioning, uh, than the uh, last one, it will stay. This is something that right now needs to be addressed by, by admin. I actually delete the bogus version and then the versioning will be uh, fine again. 
but uh, there isn't any anything that could automatically uh, do this because we are not checking uh, the versions uh, uh, retrospectively just looking for the new one that we don't have I'm not sure if it's even a good good thing to uh, removing versions that we don't uh, find because uh, for some backends it's uh, it's retrieving uh, it's just parsing the page and if the page only contains the latest version it will delete all the others okay so next one would it make sense to support defining URL to watch in spec file or in a file in this kit um, Right, right now, we are uh, having the Anitya independent of uh, anything that is in Fedora, right? Uh, Fedora world itself. So we don't want it to really check this kit or other things like it. This is a new hotness uh, thing. Uh, the new hotness could do it, but uh, it is just uh, for it is not not really great because it's not checking for the new version. The Anitya does this, and you actually need to set this up in Anitya project correctly. Okay, so next one. I would love to have uh, release monitoring enabled by default for our new Fedora. What would be needed to make that work? In particular, would Anitya be able to figure out automatically Rust foo is Rust package listed in on crates IO with semantic versioning and summary? For Python, but oh, this is something that is actually uh, that is actually in work by by Terralanch. I'm not sure. I think it's in, still in progress. Uh, it it will be opt in. The people don't need to uh, don't actually need to have been notified. Not everybody wants the notification for a new package for a new uh, version. So it will be opt-in, but uh, right now you can actually sp uh, s uh, specify when you're creating a new package if you want to be monitored or not, but it doesn't create the project in Anitya. Uh, this is something that we want to add and it's still in work. It not, uh, it's not there yet, but yeah, it's something we want to do as well. And the last one. Can package maintainers be given some level of control over their packages on release monitoring.org? For example, some upstream publish a ton of messy versions before a Fedora package is created. Sometimes messing up incremental version, I'd be great. You could clean that up yourself and add the, the proper exclusion rules. Uh, the exclusion rules are actually something that you can do by yourself. You don't need to, uh, you don't need admin of uh, releasemonitoring.org for this. Uh, the deleting of the version, as I said before, uh, we didn't give uh, users um, ability to actually delete the versions. Uh, the reason for this was actually to, uh, to preserve uh, as, as much as possible and only the admins have, it, have the uh, possibility to do this. When I'm thinking about it, maybe adding this possibility to standard user of monitoring.org could be possible. They don't then they still can't delete the project, but they could probably delete the versions only, which would uh, help them to actually manage the projects. They're, I assume they will be trolls that will just delete all the versions on the project, but yeah, they. If there are trolls, they can uh, play with the release monitoring.org right now because there are plenty of things you can do. And that will, because everybody can edit any project. So if you want to just uh, exclude all the versions, that no version will be retrieved in the future, it's possible. But I don't think, I don't saw anybody actually messing up with this. And the people could actually uh, save. Uh, uh, set it back again by uh, by themselves. 
but the exclusion is already available there is uh, exclude versions or i'm not sure how it's uh, like now called but it could be like this uh okay okay and for the package maintainers actually managing it uh as i said before release monitoring.org doesn't know anything about this kit in fedora so it doesn't know who the maintainer of any package is they don't want to have this because uh, the package could be for plenty of distributions and we don't want uh, somebody to actually have but um, more rights than the others from the different distributions. So either we uh, give the rights to all users or uh, or some of them will be only for admins. Uh, okay, so this is all I have for today. There are some references. I will, I can share the link to the to the slides. Let me just share it. And uh, otherwise, this is all, all from me. Thank you all. Here is the link. Uh, thank you all. And see you later on the nest. Bye, everyone.